نرحب بكم في هذه الليلة لاستقبال أسئلتكم أو مداخلاتكم حتى نستفيد لأن الهدف أن نستفيد من هذه الجلسة العلمية وأنا أستفيد منكم أيضا ومن ملاحظاتكم فبارك الله بكم Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I'm going to ask you a, a question that I honestly see almost all the youth have a struggle with, especially those living here in the West. And that is related to listening to music. Unfortunately, uh, as much as we know, clear cut that music is haram, a lot of us who even come to the Islamic centers and we claim to be Muslims and whatnot. We belittle the, the sin of listening to music to an extent that we see it as completely permissible. And maybe that's because of our surroundings, whether it's in school, university, the friends we are engaged with, listen to it. So we are desensitized and we belittle it. So how can we explain, especially to people who might not be necessarily super religious, that music is not permissible in Islam? And what kind of ways can we suggest to such people so that they can cut on this bad habit. Thank you. One of the challenges of modern time is music. You find it everywhere. It's, perfi it's pervasive. You can't get away from it, right? You even go to a restaurant, they have this you know, music coming from above you. You go to Tim Hortons, they have this music above you. Everywhere you go, there is music. And this is a big challenge for our youth. You know, once a Sayyid al Burujirdi, you know, one of the great scholars, a few decades ago, they were discussing music when one of those pious men, he told him, you know, music, I find it very unattractive. When I hear music, it really uh, is, it's very unattractive. <laughs> you know what the Sayyid told him? He told him, you know what, even though he was very pious, he told him, you're not, you're abnormal. Because music is not haram because it's unattractive or it's because something that the self, you know, uh, finds it very problematic. No, in fact, we can easily interact with the music. We easily find the temptation and the joy in it. It's something that brings you joy. It's one of the temptations of life. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has outlawed many types of music. Now my advice to our dear youth, now my advice to our dear youth I'll ask you this question why are, why are drugs prohibited? Are drugs good or bad? Are drugs good or bad? We're not talking about prescription drugs, no The bad drugs, cocaine, heroin These types of drugs Are they good or are they bad? Why are they bad? If you take them once I don't think it's going to kill you Right? Maybe the harm that it will bring you is just like that delicious, oily hamburger, right? It also has that harmful effect. If you take it once, it's not going to kill you. But why should you stay away from it even once? Why? For what reason? What is it about drugs that makes them so dangerous? Exactly, they're addiction. They make you addicted. You take that cocaine once, maybe it's not going to kill you, obviously. It's not going to hospitalize you or make you sick. But if you take it once, you're going to take it again and again and again. The same with other types of drugs. They are addictive. One aspect of music is that it's addictive. Once you get the hang of listening to music and you go into the world of music, you can't let go. Once it becomes addictive, it becomes a distraction. It, da it distracts you from your Lord because it awakens the animalistic desires that we have. Let me ask you this very honest question. When you have a young man or a young woman, and they're listening to this music, especially the provocative type of music, you know, the one that awakens your desires. That type of music, the strong type of music. After listening to that music, honestly, honestly, do you really feel like standing and doing your salah or reading dua or no? You're pulled towards the sins. Which one? 
Be honest with me. If what I'm saying is wrong, I want someone to correct me. Music brings us closer to sin because it's an addiction and a distraction. It distracts you from the reality of life. It distracts you from your Lord. And it doesn't make you any feel any better. Yes, temporarily maybe it makes you feel better. Just like drugs, those who are high on drugs, I'm sure they tell you that it feels very good. But then after a while, when the effect of the drug goes, what happens? They fall down. Music may make you feel good, but throughout time, it actually has a negative impact on you. You know, if you ever see someone that tells you, you know, no, music makes me find this peace within me and makes me a peaceful person and a calm person. If at one time they're listening to that music and they're way into it, go shut it off. See what happens. Try it next time. See what happens. What kind of reaction will you get? What kind of reaction will you get? You'll see the person... Why did you turn it off? They'll get angry. Immediately there is anger. Habibi, I thought this was supposed to calm you down. Where is this anger coming from? I thought this was supposed to calm you down. You should be now calm. You should say, Ahlan, Habibi, thank you for pushing that button. No, that's not the reaction you get, right? It's a distraction. So my advice to our beloved youth, don't allow yourself to get addicted to something that distracts you, keeps you away from Allah and from khushu'a. Believe me, when you're addicted to listening to music, you will not find khushu'a in salah. You think you will find khushu'a in salah? You'll find that humbleness and focus in salah? You cannot. So this is very brief. Of course, we can talk for hours about music and it's, Bad effects, but I guess that summar summarizes it briefly.